Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new interview with Kevin Kiner from the Star Wars, the Clone Wars, Rebels, and of course, upcoming the Star Wars, the Bad Batch. He was just nominated for an Annie Award, which he actually won for. This interview was filmed right before that, and we get some great tidbits, whether it's with the Clone Wars Season 7, and especially some hints at his score and what will be going on in the Bad Batch. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Thank you so much for Film Speak for letting me do the interview, and in general, guys, I hope you enjoy. So thank you so much for joining me, man. Um, I am very excited to be here talking with you because you were just nominated for an Annie Award for Star Wars The Clone Wars series finale. How does it feel? Because Victory and Death, I mean, honestly, that score was just perfect. And those last four episodes of Clone Wars are some of my favorites that Star Wars has ever done. Yeah, uh, myself as well. Uh, some of my favorite episodes, uh, mm -hmm. probably my favorite arc for sure is those, those last four um in the final season and it's really gratifying to be nominated um you may know i've been no nominated for annies and emmys a number of times uh the last time i was nominated for a primetime emmy which was <laughs> unbelievable and i lost to game of thrones which you know what are you gonna do that's okay uh, just great to be nominated and again you know I, one of my best friends and favorite composers and guy I worked with a long time ago, David Arnold is now is nominated in this category currently uh, for the Sammy awards. And uh, if I lose to David, you know, that's fine. It's he's, he's one of the great composers, film composers ever. Yeah. Well, and there's something awesome about this is that like, I didn't know this till um, the reps had told me, but you have written more music for Star Wars than any other composer, whether it's the Clone Wars, uh, Seven Seasons, uh, Rebels, Four Seasons, plus your animated feature with Clone Wars, and now, as we know, Season 1 of The Bad Batch. I think this is really interesting to hear. And knowing that, um, how does that make you feel? That like you have created so much wonderful music for Star Wars. And really, for me, honestly, like I'm a big Star Wars fan, but when it comes down to the animation, that's some of my favorite stuff. So all of your scores have really affected my life. Yeah, that's probably the most amazing thing to me because, you know, I'd come, I, I was affected, my life was affected by John Williams. I am yeah. a film co composer, possibly because of John Williams. Certainly because of, you know, Ennio Morricone, John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith, John Barry. Those were my guys when I was in my 20s and, uh, and, you know, that's so, so I understand what it's like to be influenced by somebody that you look up to and that you watch, you know, and you go to the, I remember the first Star Wars I ever saw, you know, like it was the first week it was out and I saw it in Westwood in 77, I guess. And uh, to have somebody like you and other people, you know, of your generation tell me that my music has influenced them. It, that's the greatest honor. That's better than any Annie or Emmy mm -hmm. or anything that I could ever be. I, I, and it's just, what a great job to be able to influence people's lives in, in, in that way. I, I'm, I'm just really blessed and fortunate. Well, you deserve it, man. And so like, let's throw in some fun questions. I, I would like to know, who are some of your favorite Star Wars characters? Like ones that maybe you either scored a scene for, or maybe even any characters you haven't touched on yet. Well, that's that, you know that's really funny. I I've done a lot of interviews. I don't think yeah. anybody's asked me that. Really, it's a fairly, it's a fairly difficult question, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so I mean, I would have to just go on my like what popped into my head the second you asked that. It's got to be Darth Vader for oh, me yeah. um, when he comes on the screen. It just you know whenever I got to score him, I was just out of my mind. Yeah, well, you and there's, know. yes, like, absolutely. And you mentioned Darth Vader, you know, two incredible scenes, something at the end of the Close War Season 7, that moment of him walking over and grabbing oh. Ahsoka's lightsaber. All yeah. of the musical cues in there, man. How do you come up with that? How, how, what does that creativeness come and flow out? Because it's just synced so perfectly. Well, um, you know, I, I mean, it's a creative process as a film mm -hmm. composer, and at its best which I, I'm just so fortunate to have the best environment I can imagine. And I mean, I've worked at this for like 35 years or more. Uh, just the most amazing director and producer team, 
Um, Dave Filoni is is yeah. just a dream boss, uh, as was George Lucas back in the day. But now that that Dave's taken over, you know, he had a lot of influence on that score, uh, and he was listening to a lot of things, and and he really wanted to to go more electronic at the end, like that. So I mean, that I've I've got to give him the credit for making that choice. Okay, uh, you know, I I had to execute. Um, as well as as my sons, who now co-write co co-write much of my shows with me in the last five or ten years, um, but you know that's part of the process when you have a really good when somebody doesn't just say oh make it dark or make it purple mm -hmm. whatever you know when somebody really gives you you know their thoughts and you know and Dave is fantastic as well as you know choosing the idiom of, of let's go electronic with this. He's also giving us really insane backstories, you know, and talking about Ahsoka and, and, you know, her choices that she had to make and that, you know, she, this is not just the Darth Vader scene. I mean, that Darth Vader scene kind of speaks for itself because, and also I, I had to think my second favorite character to score is Ahsoka. Yeah. You know, you asked me that. So, so I mean, it would be Darth Vader number one and then Ahsoka number two uh, for, for me, and maybe then Yoda, Obi-Wan, Anakin. I don't know how, you know, Darth Vader <laughs> and Anakin yeah. interact. But, but, you know, so there at that very end, you have Darth Vader, but there's a little bit of Ahsoka's theme sneaks in, mm -hmm. if, you know, in there, which is so cool to be able to do. Um, and, and also just listening to Dave's backstory of, you know, what the emotions are, especially in scenes previous to that, like when Ahsoka is walking through the graveyard and when she's making the choice not to kill clones. You know, I mean, she's up against incredible odds and she has to choose, even though it, it probably is going to mean that she's going to die, she has to she chooses not to kill clones, yeah. you know, and she, she makes the hard choice, which I don't know any of us would do, but it's so classic in Star Wars that being up against it and making the right choice, making the, taking the path less traveled by and, and you know, how, how difficult that must be for, you know, if you put any of yourself. So when Dave gives us those kind of emotions and those kind of like backstory um, nuggets, it, it's it's just complete fertilizer for for yeah. for making things grow, you know, and, and making music happen. Well, it must be why all these scores turn out so wonderfully. And you mentioned Ahsoka; that is actually my favorite Star Wars character ever. And wow. you've been with her from the beginning, you know, the animated feature film, and then now throughout the entire show, and even to Rebels, where she shows up in. It's so fascinating, and I'm really excited to see that that's your second favorite character to score, because Darth Vader, of course, makes sense, but Ahsoka yeah. has to be right up there, too. So, adding in there, you know, this is the final season of Clone Wars, and for a while, I never thought we would actually get season seven. How was it? what was that feeling of hearing that, Hey, we're coming back for another season of clone wars. We're going to be able to finish out this story. Well, I mean, the whole journey, you know, nobody knew what was going to happen once George, you know, stopped being involved. Yeah. And, and just being so pleasantly surprised with the way star Wars has been handled the way we've been given creative freedom Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just fantastic. And I loved working on Rebels. Uh, you know, so we, I got to do that for four years. And then, I mean, when they told me that we were going to finish Clone Wars, I'm like, I can't believe this. <laughs> this just doesn't happen in Hollywood where, you know, the things that, that maybe got left out actually you go back and yeah. you rectify a mistake that was made or, or something that happened. I mean, I mean, it's not even a mistake. It's just, you, you know, you, you complete what needs to be completed. It, it was just, it was unbelievable news. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it was sure fun for me to be able to do it. I bet. And I was so excited that like everyone was being able to come back because like, you know, I love season six, but I wanted that next one. I was glad we got rebels and fantastic job also on rebels. I mean, Jesus, like Thanks. that last season, I, and everything within yeah. that, I, I'm rewatching the show right now. And it's just like, so great to see. So, 
ah, man, there's so much. So with this, what's your approach to composing Star Wars, though? Building on what John Williams created, but making it into your own. Is there something magical to it? Is there some sort of, I know you mentioned Dave Filoni gives you a lot of direction, but how does yeah. that feel? Well, you know, I, I often, I, I don't have it with me here, but uh, I mean, like here, here's a, I study scores all the time. Here's, mm -hmm. you know, the latest is Petrushka by, you know, Stravinsky. And it, I, so I study, I have an old Star Wars score that I got probably in the late seventies or early eighties. Mm -hmm. And it's dog-eared. The, the, the cover's coming off of it. it I write all over it, um, you know, my interpretations of what I think John is going for or, or little what we would call licks or motifs, you know, little tricks he uses. So, I mean, I've been studying him for so long. And when, when you do that, the best way it can turn out is that it becomes, you don't just imitate, but kind of the words he uses, if you were a writer or whatever, start to become the words you use, you know? So, and, and, and not in an imitative kind of way, but it just becomes part of your vocabulary. So uh, I hopefully have taken the best of his musical vocabulary and, you know, melded it with my own. And I, you don't know how that works. I mean, I don't know where music comes from and, uh, Nobody does, you know, but uh, it's 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 cool. It's a magical <laughs> thing. And that's the thing. I always feel like the scores are the most underrated pieces of film and TV because it can enhance the scene in so many different ways. So with that, what was your favorite moment from the final season of Clone Wars that you really got to dive in and bring to life? Uh, there's a couple of moments. Um, I think when when Darth Maul is being hauled up to the uh, Star Destroyer by Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was in episode 11, maybe the one previous to the, uh, it's the penultimate episode. Um, the scene with the graveyard is pretty freaking amazing. Yep. Um, even just the opening of episode 12, where I, I, you know, we used a real choir and that's an homage to, you know, some things that John did yep. and, and stuff. Uh, so, those are some of my favorite moments, really. Okay. Yeah, because you brought Order 66 to life in a different area yeah. that we have never seen before. And that right. was the thing that I was waiting for this entire season. I didn't think, I honestly, as the season started, I was like, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to do Order 66. They'll hint at it. Yeah. But then it got there because the Darth Maul and Ahsoka stuff ended pretty early. I was like, we got, we got two more episodes here. Where are yeah. they going? So yeah. it's very interesting. Um, no, I and, and I think in the movies and yeah. stuff, at least in the in the original uh, six films, they you know Order sixty six was there, but it it wasn't fleshed out the way no. that, that you know we got to flesh it out in Clone Wars, especially. And it's a that's a big deal, you know, and 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 being able to to score that is just i mean yeah you, i'm just right in the canon now and yeah. it's, it's such an honor well and it comes from when you're also a big fan of star wars so you're all into that you're taking it all yeah. and you're able to bring something into this world and like i'm clone war season seven those last four episodes like if it was if i were to say that that was a movie that would be like my second favorite thing of star wars ever i i was utterly blown away with it and your score was a big part of that so out of the many different star wars series there are so many that have been announced now because of disney plus are there any that you're interested yeah. diving into or any of the ones that you heard about you're like that was that's pretty interesting well I, as you probably know i'm i'm currently working on bad bad yeah and and so and, and i'm that's really really going to be fun i think everybody's really going to enjoy that mm -hmm. and, and of course anything that ahsoka's involved with is always interesting to me and and, and stuff uh, so you know i i don't i i don't read a lot of the press and i yeah. i'm not really even aware of stuff i I've, I've sort of been always a i i'm not on social media mm -hmm. um I've kind of been a tunnel vision person all my life is I've worked a lot. And so I kind of focus on what's in front of me. And right now I'm, I'm just, I'm doing my dream job. So it's great. 
Well, that's awesome. And I honestly, I claim you. I, I hate social media. I hate having to be on it to follow all the news and see what's coming out. But that's yeah. awesome that you get to really like tunnel vision and in a sense, really much just hone in and keep studying what you are so passionate about and to really kind of come to an end of this all. Is there anything you can hint at your score uh, for the Bad Batch? Anything you're kind of going for with that? I know it's a couple months out, but uh, I'm very excited for the show. and I'm sure many people are looking forward to it as well. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're just starting to work on the soundtrack and, mm -hmm. and there's going to be, I, I don't know if I can really say, but uh, there's definitely going to be soundtrack releases that okay. are concurrent with Bad Batch and as Bad Batch comes out. Um, and I'm kind of going over, it's, it's funny because I've been working on it for a while now. Yeah. And I forgot about some of the cues even that I did back then, but uh, um, at the start of Bad Batch. But uh, I think you're going to find... Um, maybe not quite as electronic as the end of Clone Wars, but there's definitely going to be an electronic influence. The, um, I, th I think Bad Batch is going to be much more, um, is, it, the score wise, it's, it's going to continue the journey of, of Star Wars music, specifically that I compose. And I mean, I've said so much mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, as you say, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough. I mean, you don't really go for records in this business, yeah. but I've written more Star Wars music than anyone is. That's amazing. But it's also something you can really burn out on. You can get really stale. And and myself and my sons are, are really cognizant of that. Um, so the music is pushing forward in terms of modern sounds, but also in terms of uh, uh, orchestral use and combination with modern sounds, um, being experimental. I, I can tell you, I play this thing on it. Um, this is like a kind of like a cello, but it's it's okay. spreaded like a, a guitar, and it has six strings. It's called a guitar viol, and um, it's very soloistic. Uh, kind of sounds maybe like an Asian violin or viola or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but I, I use I, I use this instrument not a ton, but in the appropriate places. And so there's a very spare kind of part to some of the score. Not, not all all of it. Not not even a lot of it. But uh, so. You know, I, I I would just say I keep pushing forward and keep mm -hmm. keep trying to be interesting. Well, and you keep doing that with every single score you've done. It's always different and going, but always connecting at the same point. So I'm so excited to hear your score for Bad Batch, especially with you talking about that instrument. Like that just sounds like it's going to be something unique. So thank you so much, Kevin, again, for joining yeah. us for this interview. Congrats on your nomination again. I know you thank said you. that your friend is up as well. I can't say enough that I hope you win because I love victory and death and it's, it's fantastic. So congrats right. again, man. And can't wait right. to hear your score for bad batch. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Nice to meet you and uh, may the force be with all of us.